Hey, what's up guys? My name is Shana. Welcome back to my Game Engine series. So today we've got a very, very exciting episode. But maybe not. Maybe it'll be exciting to some people. It's actually pretty exciting to me, even though it might be considered objectively tame. But today we're going to be talking about references and smart pointers and all of that fun stuff that we just need to consider for kind of our core engine. Because this kind of stuff is stuff that you kind of just brush under the rug. It's stuff that everyone loves to just ignore. And then eventually all of your technology will come crashing down because you just didn't consider this back in the day of you kind of beginning this stuff. So last time we talked about something else that I can't even remember. What did we talk about last time? Uh, shader abstraction and uniforms. So check out that video if you haven't already. Yeah, I had to check that on my phone because I'm so focused on today's episode, which is references and smart pointers and unique pointers and how all that system works. Okay, so enough kind of fluff, enough of that crap. We're gonna actually get into it now. So <sighs> what is going on right now with our code? Pretty much everywhere we're using this kind of shared pointer thing where, you know, just we need to create a shader. So it needs to be created on the heap. So what do we do? We encapsulate it inside a shared pointer object for two purposes. First of all, because we want to control the lifetime of this object, we want to somewhat tie the ownership to Sandbox app, but also make it so that if this app kind of gets destroyed or any scope that we're dealing with gets destroyed, this object too will get destroyed because it's a shared pointer, provided there are no other references to it. Now we could have used a unique pointer here, no reason kind of not to, right? You would think, you know, just type in unique pointer, scope it. I think uh, some people actually did suggest that in the comments that why is this not a unique pointer? Because it needs to be, you know, clearly the lifetime is tied to this. It can't exist outside of Sandbox app or anything like that. Should we be using unique pointer? Now, now smart pointers are interesting because they kind of provide us with a system that helps us, right? They're there to help us. They're there to say that you're not gonna actually call delete, are you? We'll handle that for you based on the kind of traits of the object that you're kind of shoving into that smart pointer. Now I have a video on smart pointers. I even have a video in the C++ series specifically about what I think of smart pointers. Now, I think that has changed and that video I think isn't necessarily about what I think of them, but it's just how I think they should be taught because I think there's a lot of emphasis on smart pointers these days and people getting really angry in comments, in my comments, being like, why, why did Cherno just write new? Did Cherno just write delete? Why? That's wrong. The point is, smart pointers are fantastic. I wouldn't live without smart pointers because if smart pointers didn't exist, I would just write a smart pointer class and just we would just use that. But the problem is more, it's kind of deeper than that. The problem is the fact that it's not just about new and delete. It's not just about abstracting that away and especially automating that delete part. It's 50% of it, if not more, is about ownership. It becomes a question of ownership, right? this is now owned by something. If we make this a unique pointer, guess what? That means that this sandbox class literally owns that shader, right? Because if it doesn't own that shader, and some of the sandbox class is the example layer class, but the point is that example layer class literally owns that shader. Why? It's nothing you can do. You can't copy it. You can't hand over ownership. That's it. When that example layer gets popped off the layer stack because the application's closed, because we want to transition to a new level, because we want to do anything like that, Right, as soon as that dies, that's it, our shader's wiped off the face of the earth. If the memory is released, it could be instantly reclaimed, it's gone, right? I want to suggest that that is actually an issue. That's a problem, we can't have that. We literally can't have that. Because right now, if that were to happen, I think we'd probably be okay. But you have to consider the bigger picture. Let's take a look at a renderer Let's have a think about what our renderer would be like if it was actually, you know, a solid renderer and not just like a bunch of functions and, you know, I mean, we're on our way, we're on our way, we're gonna get there. But right now this renderer is, you know, very, very bare bones. If we had a real renderer, let's have a think of what that would look like. Okay, so we have our renderer submission, right? We call Hazel renderer submit. What does that do? Well, at the moment it takes in a shader. In the future, as I said, it would take in a material potentially, but right now it takes in a shader. What have we done? We've submitted a shader for rendering. We've submitted a vertex array for rendering. A vertex array, that's also an asset, right? Any kind of asset is going to be a pointer, essentially. It's gonna be a, a heap allocated object and eventually probably not allocated in the heap, but allocated in kind of our memory arena or something like that. 
Um, Vertex Array is a it's it's a, it's a resource. It's an asset that we need to actually use to render that. And we have a transform. Now, a transform that's a map four. I mean, arguably, you could just not really a real asset. You could, if you wanted to, have 64 bytes of data, you'd probably copy that and you take that, and that's it. You can just deal with that. But shaders, right? That shader, that vertex array, they're actual assets, right? What I mean by that is we can't just like decide that if I want to retain an asset, I'll copy it. That should never be done because it's an asset. You know, it's, it might be huge, right? I mean, sure, it might just be like an open jail ID or something, but for all intents and purposes, it's an asset. So what have we done? We've submitted it for rendering. Rendering. What did I what, what have I said about rendering all this time? It's deferred, right? You will not be rendering stuff immediately. If we look at submit right now, it calls render command draw indexed. What is it doing? It's immediately drawing. Not gonna happen in the future, right? Because as I talked about, we need to be able to have a context of an entire scene that we want to actually render before we start rendering. Right? So before we actually start even rendering one single object on the screen, I wanna have practically the full scene of everything because I need to do sorting, I need to do actual like culling potentially, right? I need to batch things together and improve the performance. So many things I might wanna do, right? I have to have the whole scene in order to do that so that I don't do inefficient rendering because that would be bad, especially for us because we're trying to be all cool and hip and trendy. So the point is, I need to take this shader object that has just been given to me and I need to kind of hold a reference to it. If I don't hold a reference to it, that's gonna be problematic. The vertex array, same thing. I need that vertex array later, right? How later? Well, I mean, I don't know, in the future. I'm gonna render this in the future. So first of all, step one's render rendering is deferred. Now step two, most engines are multi-threaded, right? You would not run an engine on a single thread. I don't think that's ever happened before. Well, it's definitely happened before, but I don't think recently any engine really that has shipped a game has probably shipped on a single thread. Why? Because your computer, your device that you're on has multiple cores, multiple actual like virtual threads. It has a system for dealing with stuff at the same time. So if you're literally not doing that, you're just wasting potential performance, stuff that you could get for free. You're just wasting it, right? It's kind of like having a gas stove. You have like five different things you need to cook, you need to fry up this, you need to fry up that, all in separate pans, and you use one of your gas burners, right? If you've got an electric stove for some reason, then, you know, adapt that metaphor to that. But my point is, what you wouldn't do that. You'd use all four burners. I came up with this on the spot, by the way, but four is like perfect, because a lot of things have like four cores. And anyway, the point is, you're not gonna use a single burner at a time, that's silly, right? Or your food's gonna get cold. You're gonna use all four burners at once and you're gonna create this masterpiece, when is cooking with Cherno coming? Very soon. But my point is that you're not gonna do that. You're gonna actually use each stove. Same, same thing here, you wouldn't just write an engine that uses a single thread because that's somewhat silly. So because we use multiple threads in our engine, that render command queue that we've kind of deferred, that's all the stuff that our renderer has to do, that's going to run on a separate thread. What that means is that while our current kind of thread, our game thread, our update thread, our application thread, whatever, while that is just, you know, submitting data to the renderer, the renderer is actually at the same time processing and rendering that previous frame worth of data. Okay, so what we end up with effectively is something that is one frame behind. Now, what happens is once that, once that application has finished submitting everything it needs to do for this current frame, it will move on to the next frame while the renderer renders that frame. Consider this, we've changed our level, right? Well, we've, I don't know, we've released an object from memory because the application thread is done with it, right? Now that, uh, that let's just say that's example layer. We've released example layer from memory, right? And it's gone. However, next time we roll around to the next frame that our renderer is going to want to render, right, that shader object, that vertex array has been deleted. So explosion, nothing gets rendered, we crash, tears everywhere, probably from just everyone, everyone, all of you crying at the same time. Ridiculous, right? So we can't have that. What that means is that in some form or another, that render thread has to actually have a strong reference to that object. Strong reference meaning that it has a reference that is somewhat counts as like ownership, meaning that until that reference is released, it, the object is not freed from memory. 
This sounds exactly like a reference count system, right? That's a ref count system, okay? Shared pointer is a ref count system. That's why we're using shared pointers at the moment. Now, here's another little curveball. And by the way, that little explanation there, um, just keep in mind that, that that is why I personally think that pretty much every object in your engine should probably be a shared pointer. People may, th may, th people may say that that's inefficient. You have to use unique pointer in a lot of cases. And I would probably maybe agree, but no, because the performance overhead is so negligible from using a shared pointer over a unique pointer. In certain situations, 100%, you might want to use a unique pointer, but to be honest, I think from experience, and I'm just kind of thinking back in my head now, most of the times where that has been the case, I've just used a raw pointer because, just because, right? I don't think if I'm dealing with that kind of stuff where performance is such an issue, I'll mostly usually use raw pointers, not just be, not because unique pointers are slow, of course they're not, they have zero overhead. It's because that kind of code base that requires that is most likely going to benefit from a raw pointer. You could still enclose it in, you could still encapsulate it inside a unique pointer if you wanted to, but from experience, probably not something that I've actually done. The point is that unique pointers are great and you might want to use them, but in pretty much all cases, especially right now, when you're not, when you're not just bottlenecked by the fact that your 90% of your thread time is because shared pointers incrementing and decrementing references. That's not the case. So every single asset in the engine that gets submitted to the render thread especially should be a shared pointer. And that's kind of what we're dealing with. Now, before we get into the code and we take a look at this, because what I want to do is change the way that we actually present shared pointers, like just change the way they look. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, before we get into that, I just want to quickly mention shared pointers do have overhead, right? Now I've just mentioned that it's negligible and I'm probably right, but in some certain situations, maybe we decide that we don't want a shared pointer necessarily, right? Because shared pointers do a few things. I mean, first of all, they're not an intrusive ref count object, meaning the reference count is not stored as part of the actual object that you've allocated. It's stored in a separate control block, which in most cases is going to be in line with your object. So that somewhat negates that issue. The other issue that we could potentially face if we're nitpicking is uh, thread safety. So shared pointers are thread safe, meaning that the way that they achieve that thread safety specifically is they use an atomic increment and an atomic decrement, decrement, decrement. I never say that word. Anyway, they decrement, decrement, decrement. It's got to be decrement. They decrement and increment the pointers, the, the reference count atomically, which is fantastic for thread safety. It means we'll never get errors really. But that obviously has to lock everything up and do that atomic increment, decrement. That stuff takes time, could potentially add a little bit of overhead. Now, look, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not one of those just crazy people who will absolutely fight over such a small, like in reality, such a small kind of hitch in performance, right? Especially because there's so many other things we could optimize. But since it could be a problem, and since we might want to say, ah, we don't need thread safety, we want to just run fast. Not that we won't run fast with this, but you know, just bear with me. We might want to change it into our own kind of ref count object, right? Which would, for all intents and purposes, probably be a shared pointer class. Like it would probably be exactly the same, except it would do the, a normal increment decrement instead of an, an atomic one. Because of that, we might want to change in the future for whatever reason. Shared pointers might not be something we stick with forever. So because of that, um, that's going to be a very difficult change because we'll have to find, replace all shared pointers and replace them with something else. Maybe in some cases we actually do want to use shared pointers though, right? So what we need right now is, well, there's two issues. There's that, which I've just mentioned, but there's also the fact that STD shared pointer everywhere kind of looks a bit ugly. No, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it kind of looks ugly. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our own little type that is essentially a shared, it's going to be a shared pointer right now. In the future, it could blossom into its own type where it's, like, you know, actually a class and everything. But for right now, we're just gonna change it so that it's gonna be um, our own thing. And that's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be called a ref. So it's gonna be called a hazel ref, okay? And what we'll do is for the uh, unique pointers, we'll also create a hazel scope, right? So we have a scope and we have a ref. 
So the scoped kind of pointer is gonna be our hazel scope thing. And then our ref is gonna be a shared pointer. So unique pointer scope, because that's what it is. It's just a scope. Um, and our reference, we're gonna call ref. So let's take a look at what that's gonna look like and see if it makes our code base look nicer. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is go to our core.h file, which contains pretty much all of the core stuff. And I'm going to add a namespace called hazel, right? Nothing too special there. And then what we're gonna do is create essentially a type def, except we're gonna use using for our two different types. So scope being a scoped pointer, right? So this will be a unique pointer. And then we're also going to create ref for our ref counted object, which is a shared pointer. So because of course we want this to work with templates, that's why we're actually using using, apart from the fact that using is the thing to use these days, um, it also enables us to actually define this as a template. So we have uh, a template type name T, and then this just goes here. And now what we can actually do is use scope with a, you know, a type when we actually make it, whenever we end up using it. So this is obviously vital because otherwise this wouldn't really work. We'd have to like, and, and I mean, that's the other thing, like you could definitely do stuff like, um, you know, let's just say we had a shader class, right? Instead of writing ref shader, which you currently have to do, and this is as opposed to, you know, std shared pointer. So what's, what, what has basically done is enabled us to change this code into just simply writing ref shader. And if we're outside of the Hazel namespace, we'll have to do that. Kind of shows you very easily that it's a, it's a Hazel ref or for a unique pointer, we would do scope, right? But apart from doing that, um, you could also create your own using where basically shader ref is a new type that is that. Right, and if you do that a lot, maybe that might make sense, but that's not something that we particularly care about. Um, it's a, another common way to do this, where basically you just define a new type, you know, at the end of your shader class, like literally in shader.h, I mean, we, we could potentially just add like a using shader ref equals, you know, either std shared pointer shader or whatever, or you could just simply, in this case, just write ref shader. But I think ref shader is, is not too difficult to write, and I don't, I don't like creating a billion different types. Um, so because of that, you can basically just stick with this. Now, this is all the code that we need, right? It's really simple. What it means in the future is we can simply just change this scope thing, you know, to be an actual template. So type name, uh, what am I doing? Template type name, and then, you know, class scope or whatever. And then we can just make a class out of it if we want to. And we don't need to change anything in our code base as long as where well, we've used scope and ref, as long as, long as those APIs are consistent with shared pointer and unique pointer. Anyway, that's done. Super exciting. Uh, what we'll do is we'll include memory up here, just in case we include this header file. We don't want to suddenly um, have issues if this header file is like included before another one and suddenly doesn't know what std unique pointer or shared pointer are. So we'll just include memory up here and then we can start changing everything. Okay, now this is the fun part. So what we'll do is for all of this stuff, again, if we wanted it to be a unique pointer, we would just do hazel scope because we're in the sandbox class right now and we haven't, we're not inside the hazel namespace. But of course we want everything to be a ref that is a, a, um, a resource. So we'll pop this in and of course, one other thing that I want to quickly mention is this does not um, in any way interfere with the with the possibility of having like an asset manager system. This, like honestly, in a very rough way, is kind of like an asset manager system. Since we're reference counting everything, we know that if a, if a given asset, if anyone is holding a reference, so in other words, if anyone requires any given asset, for any reason, that asset will still that asset will stay alive. But as soon as like you know we've basically unloaded the level, right? The level class is like gone, and we don't have we don't need this asset anymore. It can it will get released from memory. Whether or not you want that, I mean, in a real engine, you probably wouldn't want that, right? Because assets can be shared between levels, and you you, you kind of have this whole system as well. So in other words, in the future, we will have an asset manager where we can probably control the ownership in more kind of a finer grain fashion than just by having it as a shared pointer. But this is a fantastic start. And if you just need to like have a quick little asset system in your game engine, like honestly, just use shared pointers there. Great. Um, so that's pretty much done, I think, for this class. Um, really, all I'm gonna do uh, is just search for STD. Um, and I don't think we've got too many of these, but STD shared pointer across my entire solution. Maybe the entire solution was a 
was um, not necessary. We actually do have a, quite a lot of them. Oh, of course, well, we use them everywhere, right? Um, for things like this. So this just becomes a ref, and you can see that because we're inside Hazel, we don't need to do anything. We can just change this to be ref. Um, and I guess we'll just work through all of these basically and change them all to be ref. Uh, there might be quite a lot of them. Okay, so we have like, you know, we have them up here as well. Now, note, note this, right? I'm not changing them here. This I'm leaving as STD shared pointer. The point of this is not to just rename the standard template library and just create our own version of it. No, that's silly, right? I mean, we're not gonna, we could uh, type def string, std string to just be like string with uppercase, with an uppercase s. Um, and that would be like our string class, right? No, we're not, we're not trying to do that. What we're trying to do is shed some light as to what is like a Hazel reference and what is like, you know, an SCD shared pointer. This is like, this is a log thing, right? We're still gonna use shared pointers in our code if we want to, but for things that are explicitly Hazel only, right? Things that maybe in the future would be handled by an asset manager. So in other words, assets, right? That's the kind of stuff we're trying to rename into refs and like, you know, scope pointers as well. So that's why we're gonna just leave these alone. Um, okay, let's see, vertex array, for example, see how this is returning like an index buffer? Clearly that index buffer is simply a, it's like, it's an asset. So we just return a reference and this is returning um, a vector uh, and you know, this stuff as well, vertex buffers and index buffers. Those are also um, assets. Uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's look at, render API, we have this here. So I'll just rename this. You guys kind of get the point of this. I could probably just cut the video here and do this myself, but I'll still go over this just in case we run into anything uh, fun or and or unusual. Okay, and then render CVP. We rename this stuff. Really does make our code a lot cleaner as well. That's one of the things that I like about doing this. Um, okay, we've got a bunch of these things, and this needs to be a hazel ref. Uh, got a bunch of these for all of our data that we create inside our example layer. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm, I'll just do a, another search again for shared pointer. Okay, so we're looking a lot better. We've got stuff in log, but that's, again, that's totally fine. We're gonna leave that alone. And then there's a bunch of stuff in OpenGL vertex array. I could, again, I could do a find replace, but you'll notice I'm doing this manually just because sometimes like we want the Hazel namespace. Sometimes we don't want the Hazel namespace. Um, and so because of that, it's just easy. You know, for this though, I can easily just find replace that um, to just a ref in this current document because that will just work out nicely. Okay, cool. That should be it. Again, I'll do another search just to be like 100% um, sure. Okay, so now the only references you can see in the search are inside log and core, which is fantastic. So we're not using um, smart pointers basically anywhere, um, as in we're not using shared pointer anywhere, except for the log uh, class, we're just simply using um, hazelref, which is pretty cool. All right, obviously we're gonna try and compile this code, make sure that we didn't make any mistakes. And I mean, it should compile and run as usual. All right, so we get no compile errors. And now if I try and run this code, we should get the same result as last time where we have our kind of world here and everything seems to be working correctly. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit the like button. You can help support this series and everything I do here on YouTube by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge thank you as always to all the lovely patrons that make this series possible. Started doing new exclusive videos, as I mentioned uh, last time, where basically if you support even for as little as $3 a month, you get access to a whole bunch of exclusive videos. In the last one, I actually showed a bunch of like the Hazel development branch. And I think that I actually am gonna put that video up, it might already be up, um, just kind of share that uh, exclusive video with kind of all of you. Um, in general, but there's just tons of stuff to kind of explore there as well as access to the Hazel development branch source code in which this stuff and much, much more, including like physically based rendering and like animation and a whole bunch of stuff has already been done. Um, and obviously it helps support this series and just ensures that I can keep making these videos full time because that's my, this is my full time job right now, which is really, really cool. And it's all thanks to you guys. And I'm super excited for it uh, for the future. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Thank you.